Good evening and welcome to the show. This is our little corner of the internet where we talk about fountain pens, inks, journals and journaling, and just about everything and anything that's going to keep you inspired. That's my job. My job is to keep you inspired, to keep you writing, to keep you thinking, to keep you working on yourself. I'm absolutely delighted to have you here. This is the place for curious people, for people looking for a little bit of insight, a little bit of entertainment, information, and most of all, community. We have a wonderful community of people here, not just in the comments, not just watching, but in the live chat now. So hello everyone who's joining me live. It's always a pleasure to see you all. A lot of people show up every Tuesday night. It's absolutely amazing. It's very touching. I love seeing all of you. Also, the wonderful members of this channel, thank you so much for being here, for supporting us, for keeping the lights on. It means a lot to me and I just wanna thank you. I try to thank you. I hope I thank you enough because it's really motivates me it keeps me encouraged and speaking of motivation and encouragement i have a fantastic show for you this evening will the pink bald alien caterpillar pen make an appearance it might it just might ladies and gentlemen but i do have a wonderful show for you tonight we are going to cover the following topics, the following topics. So if you're following along from home, this is what we're going to speak about. I'm going to name the forgotten grail pen. That's kind of the biggest deal. Why is that a big deal? Because the bald alien caterpillar pen was not my grail pen. I just simply forgot to mention what my grail pen is. So this is the next one I'm going for. Means a lot to me. Can't wait to tell you about it. Forgot to tell you about it last week. So this week, we're going to talk about it. Hope also to mention about permanent inks and why I think permanent ink isn't always that important. Controversial? Yes, it's controversial. We're controversial here, often. We, nothing's out of bounds here. Because I'm not sponsored, I don't have a pen shop, I don't have to worry, I can say anything. I can tell you when something is absolutely miserable. And I do. And I will. But, um, yeah, so permanent inks, we'll talk about it. I'm going to touch on that too. We also got a bunch of show and tell stuff that came in through the library this week. Sometimes I call it the studio, the library, same thing came in I want to share it with you I think you'll find them interesting I really do because I find them interesting and I generally find that the things I find interesting you do as well and then maybe the other big big topic this week the heater is making its presence known I don't know if you guys are picking that up the heating system has just clicked on literally the other big topic is, this came into the studio. I couldn't resist. It is, of course, the Lamy Darth Lilac ink. Oh, did I say Darth Lilac ink? I think I meant Dark Lilac ink. But um, I can't help calling it the Lamy Darth Lilac ink. You know my pronunciation is idiosyncratic so i might as well start calling things idiosyncratic names i do call mont blanc mani blani so why not lami darth lilac so we're gonna bust this bad boy open and have a look at what shane calls the mighty shane friend of the channel all around lovely human being calls new coke yes new coke we're going to take a look at this. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. So let's get into that together, shall we? But first, but first, before we start, I always, 
I mostly like to do a pen check. I always like to share which pens I'm using on the day I do the channel. And today, it's a oldie but a goodie. Oldie but a goodie. Can anyone tell which pen this is yet? If you're watching the replay, leave it in the comments. If you're here now, chatting along, drop me a comment in the chats. Any, can you guys nail this one? All right. This is the Mont Blanc 149, my beloved Monte Blani. Very lovely pen. Had it for a while. I really quite like it. Um, any, any guesses as to which ink I have in here? Any guesses? Well, I'll show you in a second. I'll start writing. I like to write with this incredibly comfortable pen. One of the things I like about this pen is that its thickness just feels a bit more comfortable for me. I've been having some grip issues. I'm kind of coming out of them. Um, I've been doing physical therapy and it's given me a bit of a renaissance, if you will, a rediscovery of proper grips and just sort of feeling good proper for me um, before sometimes I had to like hold on I don't know what I was doing maybe I was doing this sometimes I don't know but I was happy to be able to write because I get numbness that goes from here and here all the way up my arm and it's not pleasant because it's kind of a painful numbness but um, at the moment it's at bay physical therapy is doing the trick so here we have it the Mighty 149, very comfortable, nice little lip at the end to keep your finger from spilling over into the nib, which it does at times. The threads are comfortable enough that your hands can rest. There's a little edge here, very comfortable to put your grip somewhere along there. The pen need not be posted. It's long enough that it fits into the flesh of your hand without much bother. So. If you guessed Oxblood, you guessed correctly. The Mighty Oxblood ink. I don't know how much more I have left. I can see through this pen right now. The uh, ink indicator is not very good on these. It's very far back, but it does give you an idea. I mean, I guess it starts here. I guess it's in a decent spot, but it just... By the time it shows no ink, it, it's pretty much out. So I know I'm on bor borrowed time here, but very comfortable. And this is a lovely smooth medium nib. So there we have it. One of my best pens, one of my mac and cheese pens. This is pure mac and cheese. Do you remember my mac and cheese pens? My mac and cheese pens are my warm and cuddly pens that I return to time and time again. This one was a gift from my wife over a decade ago. It's been with me through thick and thin. It, it got a little scratched up over the years. Um, I did clean it up recently though, so you can't really tell. A little bit of poly watch, a little bit of Cape Cod on the gold, and it pretty much looks like a brand new pen. If I put this next to my 146, they look like relatives. This is its slightly more, I would say more presence than the 146. So great, great pen. Great, great pen. All right. I need a little bit of tea. I'm still doing the tea thing. You guys will find out why very soon. Mm. Moroccan mint. Very good. Okay. Before we get to some of our discussions, let's let's get to some show and tell. My sleeves migrate. Cotton sweaters, right? The sleeves they they migrate on you, right? So I just don't want to get ink on them again because this just came out of the laundry. And I got ink all over the sleeve. So John Manuel says scratches are badges of honor. Yeah, you know, I, I agree with that. I like dents and digs 
into my pens. I love the concept of Wabi Sabi. It really becomes yours when it's scratched or dented. I didn't do it completely. There's still some posting marks. I could get those off if I wanted to. But I also have another thing that goes into this equation. I'm a little bit of a fidgeter. So sometimes I'm on the phone with people and um, I'll, I'll do stuff. And I'm not even almost thinking of it. I'm on the phone talking business. And what happened was, oh, I don't have it here anymore. I had another pen and I was restoring it that needed it. And then this happened to be out. So it just spilled over. Spilled over. So I'm not ashamed. I love a little bit of honest wear. Honest wear is good. Okay, let me show you some other stuff. I think you're going to enjoy. One of the most interesting things the one of the most interesting things that came into the studio is this. Have you seen this? Uh, maybe not, because it hasn't come out yet. So this is Paulo Coelho's new book. He wrote The Alchemist. If you remember The Alchemist and you like The Alchemist, this is his new book. It's coming out very, very soon. This is an advanced copy, and um, I'm really kind of excited to dig in. Here's all his other books that he wrote. It's very pretty. I like when there's little embellishments in books. I'm a bit of a bibliophile. I don't know if you realize that. I have books that I don't even like sometimes if I like the book. And what I mean is I like the way it was printed. I might like the images, the typeface, something like that. I might have no intention of reading it. This will be a fairly easy read, but it should be a lot of fun. And I'm really excited. So here it is. It's a new book. Brand new, hot off the presses. Very beautiful cover. I'm really excited to read it. I, I like simple, direct writing that has a bit of a lyrical character to it. It stimulates my poetic side. And The Alchemist was an interesting read. It was... I liked, I found it kind of immersive, but with very few words to get you there. It, it almost seemed like some kind of ancient manuscript. And I'm wondering if this is going to have the same quality. So there you go. Random book review. But it came into the library for me to promote on another platform. And I thought I'd share it with you. Next, I want to show you something pretty exciting. I have showed this last week. This is the Onion Skin Journal. So I am now starting to use it because this is my story. Well, this is my journal. Um, this was sent to me to do a review. So let's make that very clear. I did not pay for this. This was sent to me to do a review. My review is not done, but I will make a video on it soon. But it's the Onion Skin Journal. Which is cool. I kind of wish it didn't say Onion Skin Journal there. I'd prefer it to say this is my story. Um, it's also kind of backward for shelving. It should read like a book. But that's nitpicking. So this is it. I've started writing in it. Ooh. See? I started writing. So the poems I was going to put in the Leishtern, I'm putting them in here. So Onion Skin has this incredible soft quality. It's entirely transparent. In fact, back in the day, in the 1970s, when I was a young lad, we called this tracing paper. And you could put it over an image and trace it and pretend like you drew it. <laughs> you know, if you were... If you... Um, were lacking in moral character, as many people were. And you'd say, you trace that. In fact, I used to draw on thicker paper so no one would accuse me of tracing. Back when I could draw very well. I'm trying to regain that talent. But very soft, very tough paper. Uh, might be fun, by the way. This might sound crazy, 
but it might be fun to wrinkle it all up when I'm done, each page, because that's what's great about onion skin. It's kind of tough, but it's transparent. So you're going to get more detail on this as I do my review. But I did start writing in here. I'm starting to write my poems. There you go, some poems, look at that, not bad. Just started in March and I already have a, a couple. I'm kind of proud of myself. So that is the Onion Skin Journal. Super exciting. I did put a link to this in the description in case anyone's interested or wants to take a look. But I will do a video and I'm not going to put it in a regular rotation. I'm going to do a video and I'm just going to put it up as soon as I film it. I don't know when that'll be. But it'll be soon. I want to do more poems first. I want to have a few I've recorded myself writing. One of the sad things about being um, someone who makes videos as a, as a hobby. I don't really call this a hobby anymore. Lifestyle. Somebody who makes videos as a lifestyle. Yeah, I could go with that. This is so good. I love it. So one of the sad things is when you make a video, when something comes into your life, it doesn't happen unless you film it. So this sat for a few days until I could set up and film it. And then I started. And now I'm writing poems in earnest. Now that I have a few written, I'll do a few more and then I'll do my video. Probably in this coming weekend. And it'll go up shortly thereafter so pretty exciting pretty pretty exciting all right let's show something else lots of show and tell show and tell is one of my favorite things we, we got to move quick though because i don't want to uh forget stuff again so i was at the museum of fine arts my darling seven-year-old daughter said daddy let's go to the museum so I said, well, which museum would you like to go to, honey? And she said, the Museum of Fine Arts. As if, like, don't you know? So I said, great, let's go. Well, one of the great things about the MFA, as we call it here in Boston, is that they sell stationery. And being a member, I get a discount. You would get a discount if you were a member. And they have really pretty stuff like this. I quite like this. This reminds me of Florentine paper. I'm not sure if it's made by them, but it's very similar. Very similar setup. I guess I could read the tag, but you know how it is. Gold envelopes. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of Islamic tile. Um, I am dying to get to Morocco and to stay in a Riyadh in, in the Medina, somewhere interesting. And I want to be surrounded with tiles like this. And I want to listen to the water in the water fountain bubble while I journal. Maybe write some letters to you if you're an Illuminati or Cognoscenti member of the channel. I might be writing letters to you on this stationery. Maybe from Morocco at some point. But there it is. Isn't it great? I actually did write one letter to a member on this that's in the post. In the post. One of the things I really love about Massachusetts, I don't know if it's like this in the entire country. I, I love Massachusetts. I think it's just like the best place to live. There's so much here. There's so much culture. There's so many nice people. There's really good food. There's great cultural institutions, education, employment. The banking sector does well, which is where I work. And I, I guess mailboxes work the same wherever you are. But I just think it's so charming that you can just put your mail in your mailbox and put the flag up and the mailman takes it for you. Now, our mailman's very nice. I, um, I talk to him all the time and I appreciate that. So this is a great place to be. All right, we have a few more things and then we're going to get into Darth Lilac. I wish I could play the music, the John Williams Imperial March. If you go over to Instagram, I made a meme of Darth Lilac. I don't know if I could show you here. 
I might be able to show you here. Let me see. Let me try. This might be a disaster. There's photos from last time. Let me see if I can figure this out. Because you know that this is very difficult to use. Um, but I think it's worth it for Darth Lilac. Very difficult for me to use. But I'll give it a shot. This might work. It might not work. It worked. Look at that. There it is. Lammy Darth Lilac. So there you go. That's what happens when you're eating breakfast at, gosh, what time was it? 7, 7.30? And you have, you have your, uh, I forget what the photo editing software is called on my iPad, but that's what I used and that's what I made and that's what I do with my time. So there's Darth Lilac. Okay, enough of that nonsense. So let me show you something else. Let me know what you think of this, okay? <sighs> this is another one. I think you'll like this. This is another thing I bought at the MFA. William Morris. You know I'm crazy about William Morris. So I haven't actually opened this yet. So this is the first time. Oh, this is cool. Look at this. It's hard to get it all on the camera, but it hinges open, guys. And, oh no, what are, are these stickers? Oh man, I think these are stickers. Oh, this is so cool. These are for like, these are for maybe your return address or something. That is so cool. I'm going to have to read what these are for because I don't entirely know. But that is so cool. Do you see these? They're rectangular stickers with Morris and Co., designs on them but look this is even cooler look at this these are envelope seals these are so cool i was not expecting these wow this is so awesome oh wow look there's even more they're not even doubles they're just a variety is the strawberry thief in here i'm sure it is i don't see it though but i'm sure it's here that could be it i usually go by the bird but i don't see any birds but this is incredible. So these look like envelope seals. Can you see those okay? I hope you can. I think you can. Wow, that is exciting. So that's what I have here. I hope you guys don't mind this. I love stationery. I hope you don't find it boring. Ah, oh, look, there's even more like return address stickers. Wow. Isn't that great? This is so awesome. And it's in this little... Little envelope stuck to the to the top this was around i think this was like 40 dollars. i forget but you know will you say william morris and you have me um it doesn't say sorry but it's 40 sheets i think it might have been 20 something dollars i don't know but you got these papers very cool cards. Oh, these are envelopes. Wow, guys, these are envelopes. So you write, I thought this was the paper and you wrote this way. And for a second I was like, well, that's cool, but it's a little small. But these are envelopes. So you're going to write your address there, put your stamp here and one of those return address stickers here. That is so cool. I wish I bought more of these now. And these are also envelopes. Are they different? No, they're all the same, but that's okay. These are really cool. Really cool. Am I wrong? What do you guys think? You guys digging this? Yeah, it seems like you are. I see Miss Marilyn Darling. Hello. I see lots of folks. Very good stuff. Here's the actual paper. Oh man. I don't I don't know. I don't know. This is this I can't take this. I think I need a moment. I'm only, you know, I'm getting older. I can't take these kind of shocks of the system. Oh, man. The, the, oh, man. Oh, look at this. I am over the moon. Over the moon. Wow. Look at that. Look at that. That is beautiful. What a gorgeous job they did printing this. Unbelievable. Wow. So you're right here, obviously. 
but it's the backside that's the star of the show. Wow. I, I adore William Morris. There's an episode on William Morris. If you are interested in him and his designs, it's called, Do You Really Need Another Yovo Nib? So search for that in my content and you'll see a review of the Retro 51 Tornado William Morris edition. And I talk about the Yovo Nib and I talk about William Morris and his philosophy and his designs. You know me. I don't do boring, straightforward pen reviews. It, I got to bring in a lot of other stuff with it. So you get a lot in that video. Pretty much anything you'd want to know. What do you think of this one? Um, this would look fantastic in a bathroom, by the way. Because these are wallpaper and textile designs. They would do these as both wallpaper and textiles. In fact, I'm doing a wall in this house with William Morris. I am just locked in indecision as to which pattern to pick. Wow, this is really pretty. Look at that. I love this. I, I adore this. I want to cover my entire house, the outside of my house, with this. Then you'll know me. Like, there's Hemingway's house, covered in Strawberry Thief. So there we have it. What do you think of that? Am I, did I lose you all? Is it just too nerdy? I just love it. I, I was not expecting that. I was expecting some like sort of okay envelopes, maybe some cards with glossy print. I was not expecting that. Pepin did a great job out of the Netherlands. So if you're looking for this, I guess I could have looked on the back. The back does tell me everything that's in there. But why would I do that? Why would I do that? Okay. So that's a lot of show and tell. Let's get to one of our main topics. Darth Lilac. Should we do Darth Lilac? We should do Darth Lilac. Let's do it. Shall we? Shall we? Dun, 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 dun. Okay. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> You do not underestimate the dark side of the ink. Okay, so this evidently is dark lilac. I say evidently because I have no way of knowing through this packaging. I do know that this is made in Germany, which is very nice. And I know the company, C. Josef Lamy. I know it's not suitable for consumption. So I will not be drinking this ink this evening. Evidently, this ink can break my dishes. So, and it can break my cutlery. So don't put it near your wine glass and don't put it near a knife and fork. It'll break them. I don't know why, but that's, I guess, what that means. I'm not really sure. There's some kind of instructions here. I don't know what they mean. But that's okay. We're not here to look at boxes. We're here to look at ink. I just often get distracted. Oh, look at this bit of coolness. With Ink Collector. Clean refilling at all times. Very good. Very, very good. Okay. Oh, so this is... It has a little, like, nib wiper dispenser. That's super fun. Okay, here we go. Dark lilac, or so it says. Because nowhere on here does it say dark lilac. It still doesn't say it. So I just have to trust that Goulet sent me the right thing. And he, he might not. He might not like me and the channel might want to sabotage me. And he might have sent me uh, something else. Who knows? He's like, if you see that guy, send them the wrong thing. Wouldn't that be funny? Wouldn't it be funny if um, if fountain pen um, different content makers on YouTube had beef with each other? That would be funny. <laughs> okay. Ooh, beautiful. Look at that autumn oak. All right, I'm getting distracted. Far be it for me to get distracted. Oh, look at that. Oh, guys. Look, Edelstein. 
Garnett. Look at that. Okay. So this page is open, but I'm going to do it here. The reason is for all of you. I'm going to go out of order so that it's easier for you to see it. But let's see. Hopefully this is Darth Lilac. Okay, it's open. The big moment. I wish I had a drum roll. Okay. There's something there, guys. It looks kind of sheeny, right? There's nothing on the packaging to show a sheen. Charlie or Martin or any other sheen. That wasn't funny. It was funnier in my head. Sometimes things are. Okay, here we go. Here we go. And away we go. I stopped using Q-tips, by the way. I'm only using one now because I don't want to mess up my paintbrushes. But I started using really nice paintbrushes, but you need to wash them right away. Especially with a sheeny ink. I didn't want to mess up a really nice paintbrush. Because we splurge on paintbrushes in this family. My daughter loves art. And my wife, of course, studied art. And she's into art. I'm trying to get back into art. And there's a couple of things we don't deny our daughter. The first one is books. Any book that she asks for, she gets. Whatever it is. We let her express herself through her wants on books. The second thing is art supplies. If she wants an art supply, she gets it. Because it's good for her. And look, I got the shop towel, same one. Shop towels sweeping the fountain pen world since I mentioned them. By the way, look how much that's sheening up. That's kind of fun. So you might ask my opinion of this ink, and it's going to be difficult because I am not a purple ink aficionado. I bought this ink for you. This was for you. And I thought it would be fun. Is it fun? Are you having fun? Are we having fun? I'm having fun. I really am. And maybe this is a nice way to sort of close out the whole controversy and all that. Because I had my say. I heard other YouTubers did. Um, I didn't really watch anybody else's take because I've been busy. I heard a lot of you in the comments. I think that it was fun. You know, I did, I wasn't personally invested in any of this. I think kind of the the one comments that I saw that I didn't I I I guess was more challenged by, if you will. Oh, thanks for all the likes, guys. I appreciate it. I see all the likes going by. Always appreciate it. Thank you. You know when people say like before I start right, come on, let's talk for a second. You know, like People are upset that they were expecting one ink. They got another. They were upset. And then the comment is, well, you know, there's a war going on in Ukraine. Or, you know, you know, there was a tornado in in some state. And yeah, that's just not really helpful. I think we can do both. I think we can appreciate that problems are out there always but imagine if somebody had some other problem like oh, i just got in a car accident well you know there's a war in ukraine so i mean your car accident doesn't mean very much in in the relation and it's like i suppose i don't i suppose at that point though it's so relative that nothing means anything until melancholia slams into the earth when we're all in a field looking up at beautiful melancholy as it enters our atmosphere and our two planets clash together, then we can go, okay, now we all have the same problem. So that kind of relativism, if, if that's what it is, it's just not very helpful because it's fun to talk about a controversy. It's fun to remark. It's good to have an opinion. It's good to, it's smart. You're clever. If you have an opinion. To simply say. Well there's much more. Pressing issues in the world. Of course there is. 
Like that is the most obvious take. And obvious takes bore me. I think you know that from me. So I can appreciate if you were struggling with this and this wasn't what you wanted. I can appreciate it. Now, if it ruined your day and you're weak and you had a fight with your wife and family over it. You lost me there. Okay. Um, I, I, I have to admit something. Wow, I gotta admit something. Should I admit? I, we gotta talk again. I gotta. I, I hate to tell you, I, I don't want to. I don't want to admit this. Have I? I've been honest, right? I mean, these two years, two and a half years, I've been on YouTube. I've been completely honest with you. I knew I'd never stray if I'm honest. If I make my channel about my opinions, then. I can never be wrong. You might get a fact wrong here or there, but you can always correct those later. But when it comes to how I feel, I've always been honest. I got to be honest. You know what I'm going to say? Do you guys know what I'm going to say? I, I, I like it. I like it. I do. I, I like it. And I like it in a way I wish I could put into words. I wish my wife were here. And, um, if she's in the chat, as she is sometimes, if you would please chime in, because only you have the words to explain why I like it. And I'm going to try to explain it to all of you as best I can. Have you ever seen those Art Nouveau vases from the 1890s to the early part of the 20th century? And they were always in this sort of violet color and then they had this glaze on them have you seen those i think some of them were tiffany's some of them were european i think in their origin have you ever seen those that's why i like it it looks like one of those art nouveau vases the glazing and that beautiful iridescent character I, I would also say it looks a bit like a beetle's wing, like some kind of a exotic Egyptian beetle. I'll make it Egyptian. Why not? But you know, you know, those beetle's wings. Did you see the beetle's wing dress at the MFA that Sargent painted and they had the dress? It looks like that. It has this iridescent insect like character. That's, that's what I feel like. Um, I don't see my wife, but I do feel like, I feel like it's kind of neat. It's kind of interesting. I don't know what it's like written. I'm trying to write with it. It's hard to do a show and try to do this at the same time, but let's try to get something down here. It would have been cool to put it into a pen. And my Lamy 2000 ran out of ink today. So I could have put it in there. I like it. I think it looks like an old vase or an insect's wing. All right, we'll see what it looks like. When this dries. I, 
I kind of like doing thick and thin because then you get the different character of the ink. But let's give it a minute. So now I'm a bit curious what the original was like. I never had the original. I never tried it. I'm not a purple ink guy generally. But I'm curious what it'd be like with a bit of gold. I like it with the green. But now I don't want to reopen wounds or anything. Or do I? But it makes me think that perhaps they really should have renamed this ink. I, I feel like there's so many naming possibilities with whatever the name of that glaze is on those vases. And the, um, the beetle's wing. You could have done something with a beetle kind of a name. So there was no reason to kind of infringe on the old ink, if you will. Yeah, I don't know. I do like it, though. I'm, I'm going to show it to you. It's starting to dry. I just want to clean up a little so I don't spill this ink all over myself. Again. I spilled another ink. I think it was ox blood on this sweater. I really like this sweater. I think cricket sweaters are going to be my... My style inspiration for spring. So gear up for a lot of cricket sweaters. Because I have a few. Alright, let's take a look. Yeah, it has an interesting iridescence. If you can get over the controversy. If you're not very emotionally attached to the original version. This is really lovely. It's really interesting. I'll probably never use it. This is probably it for me. Uh, I, I can't imagine putting this in a pen. I mean, could I use this at the office? Probably. It wouldn't be any weirder than some of the other inks I've used from uh, Tesla Coil to Moonview 2. Of course, Oxblood's one of my go-to. I could certainly use this, but I just probably wouldn't. But it's not horrible anybody who says it is maybe has a different frame of reference than i do i i am i am certainly effective at slathering a layer of romance on top of something and for me if i can access its story or access some kind of a styling cue or something that reminds me of something else it helps to buoy me along it's it's my buoyancy is the story and to me, this looks Art Nouveau. It's like an Art Nouveau glaze, like a beetle's wing. It's, it's kind of interesting. And it does have a bit of an organic feel to it. I'm going to look up those vases that I'm speaking of, and I'll put it on my Instagram. Just so you know what I'm speaking about. And you can find me at Hemingway underscore Jones on Instagram. You can find me at Hemingway Jones on Instagram too, but it's my photography and I don't update it very often. So I already had my name there and I did the underscore underscore Jones for my fountain pen inks, journals and journaling. So there you have it. I wish my wife would tell me what that is because she is good at that stuff and I am not. We have a couple more things to get to and I think we have enough time. Ooh, I see Waski Squirrel is here. Hello Waski, how are you my friend? Another instinct to avoid is the Japanese beetle. As a gardener, they're the enemy. Fortunately, they haven't come to North Dakota. Well, they're all over here, my friend. Maybe that's why. I'm giving them such a nice home that they don't want to leave. So this is the time of year when the Japanese beetles are all over my guest room for some reason. They love my guest room. They don't, they don't really come to the rest of the house. And I'm constantly, let's just say I am relocating them relocating them and hopefully they can hold their breath so that's what we do with those guys sadly 
And the reason why, why am I so vicious to Japanese beetles? Because they can get, they can get into your cat's mouth and then they will stick on the top of their mouth. And that's impolite. Very, very impolite. <laughs> puppet access my dear friend how about naming that pen before you run out of time i know we have 15 minutes though we have all the time in the world but i'm going to name the forgotten the forgotten grail pen my next the next thing i am focused on but first thanks for all the likes guys i really appreciate it first let me just mention that I am going to just touch a little bit on permanent inks, okay? And archival inks. And this is just from personal experience. By the way, use whatever you like, whatever makes you happy. I have some archival ink handy at all times. Right now I have this stuff. This is handy. I have the Soleika handy as well. And the reason why is that Unfortunately, oopsie, I need to write checks now and again. And when I write a check, I like it to be in permanent ink. And I really don't like to write checks, but there are a few people I interact with sometimes that take checks. They're older. And um, I use permanent ink. But for my journals, it doesn't really matter. In the, you know, there are pencil journals that are still legible from 150 years ago. There's pencil drawings from the Renaissance, charcoal, all kinds of stuff. If you want your journals to survive as long as possible, be my guest. Use it. But it's just not as important as some people make it out. I have journals 24 years old behind me written in water-soluble ink, as dark and saturated as the day I put that ink down. Their pages are shut. Nothing's going to happen. And if they get wet, don't let them get wet. It's, it's not good if they get wet anyway. Even if it's archival. You know, the journal wouldn't survive. So there's that. But I guess all I'm trying to say is just don't get too bent out of shape over it. You know... It's like if you enjoy other inks, you enjoy different colors, and you're worried about it, just just use them. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Okay? So that's it on the inks. Now I'm going to talk about Grail pens because I have reined in my ambition for pens. Um, for some pens. I love pens, obviously, right? I don't make this channel about acquisition. I don't want this channel to be a, about avarice and appetite and always the next pen, the newest pen, the more expensive pen. I see some pen channels where they're always reviewing the next big pen. You get into that cycle, it's tough to get out of. If you're always showing a Mont Blanc, Mont Blanc, you know, huge, expensive, Visconti, something else, King of Pens... What do you, how are you going to one-up yourself? You know, you just go, you're going to end up with the um, Alexander the Great pen, spend $5,000 for a pen that no one would buy in their right mind. It, you don't want to be on that treadmill where you're just chasing the adrenaline of acquisition. I think it should be about ideas and inspiration. Now, for me, I've come to the point where I'm a little bit more selective about pens, but there's one area where my collection really lacks, where wonderful people who I respect quite a bit, who interact with me on a regular basis, keep extolling the virtues of this particular pen brand. And I have very few representations of it. In fact, I have two, two, two. One is an M200 and the other is an M600 Souverain Red Tortoise. So my next pen, my next grail, because I want that experience, I want to feel it, is 
a Pelican. A Pelican M800 or M1000. I haven't decided which, and perhaps you can tell me which one I should go for. Part of me thinks the M800 would be better because I have been trending towards smaller, more elegant pens, Montblanc 149 notwithstanding, but I also like the drama of an M1000, and I do like larger pens as well. You guys know me. You've been watching my videos now for over two years. We talk every week. What do you think I would like? But to me, this is my final big grail pen caveat for the foreseeable future. For the foreseeable future. Because if I say ever, I'm going to say, remember when I said that, or I'll be like, you remember Schwarzenegger to Scully? Hey, Scully, remember when I said that? I lied. That's, that's what I'll be. I'll be coming back a year from now, six months, whatever, saying, when I thought that was my last grail pen, I was wrong. So I'm seeing a lot of M800 love. A lot of M800 love in the comments from Kate. From a lot of people, M100. Waski kept his M1000 because the nib was so unique. Waski Squirrel. See, now that's interesting to me because I want unique nibs. I am definitely skewing toward unique. And for me and for the channel, I want unique. I don't want avarice. I don't want to encourage you to buy anything. I would rather you enjoy what you have. I want you to write. I want you to be happy. I want you to feel fulfilled. I want you to come to this channel for a bit of entertainment, for some new ideas, and for some funny insights, some new neologisms, some new concepts, whatever nonsense I happen to be up to, just to make you smile, make you enjoy this hobby a bit more, and to find some community with us. We're like-minded people. We're all trying the same thing. We're very kind. I'm looking for curious and kind people. Jay Cortez likes the 800. Hey, Marcus Souza with a $25 super chat. Thank you very much, my friend. He says, hi, everyone. At least I could see the end of the live. Mr. Jones, I posted a letter to you today. That is awesome. I love the letters. The Illuminati and Cognoscenti members get letters and exchange them with me. Marcus Souza is right there with me. So wonderful stuff. Thank you, my friend. This is for you. Thank you. Uh, it's a little cold, but it's still good. Moroccan mint. So good. So, yeah, lots of love I see for the M800. Ooh, look at this. Another super chat. Thank you very much. From, I can't quite read it. Let me see. Boy, my eyes sometimes, guys. Oh, one Mr. Goodman. Thank you for the commando reference. Nice. Yes. Well, there are not too many uh, fountain pen channels that use the pop culture references that I do. Everyone's writing brown foxes and sleepy dogs and all that nonsense. If I ever do that, I'm going to shut my channel down. I would, I, I bash my head against the wall before I would write a trite sentence. That's my goal, not to do that. I don't want to bore you guys. You clicked on here with a purpose. You want to be entertained. You want to be inspired to reach a little higher. I'm not going to give you anything less than what you deserve. Puppet Access, you darling man, you. Thank you very much. He says, da, 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 that Onionskin Journal, I think, needs to go to your daughter so she can design a modern version of the Voynich Manuscript. That's brilliant. And she probably would. That's absolutely brilliant. Thank you, my friend. I really appreciate that. Your kindness, your generosity. You know what I didn't mention? I didn't mention this week's video on Thursday. It's the Lost Mont Blanc fountain pen. 
This cult classic fountain pen is all but lost. You don't hear about it. You don't see videos on it. It's like it never existed. Well, this Thursday, it's on my channel. So back to a little bit more of what I traditionally do after doing fountain pens in film, authors in their fountain pens, part two's already filmed. That's going up in May. We have some other stuff coming as well. So very cool stuff. Ooh, Alejandro is um, asking a very good question. What color? Pelican. I, I don't know. I'm thinking blue or maybe the traditional green and black stripe, which I quite like, but I haven't made up my mind. I'm going to get it from Atlas. I am sure about that. JLo likes the M800 as well. Very good stuff. Voyage, more speak about the, more talk about the Voyage mag Manuscript. Very cool. Very, very cool. Good stuff. Well, ladies and gentlemen, this was maybe a first for the Hemingway Jones live show. I made it through every topic I wanted to speak about. I hope you enjoyed the ink review. I enjoyed doing it. I was surprised that I actually like it. That's the bombshell. Oh, no. Ah, <laughs> whoopsie. I like it. I like it. It's cool. It's iridescent. It's violet and green. It's better than they say. Whoever they is. Or are, rather. I quite like it. I'm going to show you one last time. Now we'll see after it dried. So this is it after it dried a bit. It's got some green. It's got some shine. It's kind of neat. It's kind of interesting. I could see a letter in this on that William Morris stationery really popping. Doesn't look great. And isn't it look really interesting where the line is thicker? Where I was a little sloppier. It looks a little more interesting. That's why I don't mind slathering the ink on, ladies and gentlemen. You get an interesting effect. Indeed you do. Okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are at the end of a long journey. We've had a wonderful evening. I enjoyed every minute of this. I hope you did too. Check out this week's video. I hope you enjoy it. And there'll be more videos to come. I thank you for being here. Take care of yourself. And I'll see you further up the road. Take care now. Thank you.